No. So we are back to the investigator phase. So what should William do? Should he investigate where he is? Or should he go out and help Wendy? I think let's do Wendy first and let's see how she gets on with these monsters. So let's attack the cultist. He only has three health, so maybe she can take him out quite quickly. So she has a knife now. She has a bladed weapon. So let's attack with a bladed weapon. You lunge towards your foe with a brutal stab. Strength and she needs two successes. So that's three dice for her strength. And she rolls two successes and a clue. So, if you pass, your weapon digs deep into the figure's stomach and you kick your foe backward off the blade. The monster suffers damage equal to the weapon's damage plus your test result, then move the monster. But that is three damage. So, with one keen blow, she takes out the cultist there. And with the second action, I think she will make a start on this hunting horror with another bladed weapon attack. You try to anticipate the monster's actions, slashing and dodging accordingly. And since we are slashing and dodging, we are gonna use observation. Her observation is four, so let's roll four dice there. And two successes. If you pass, you see the creature strikes before they come and have no difficulty avoiding and punishing them. The monster suffers damage equal to the weapon's damage plus your test result. So that's another three damage. Not quite as effective against the hunting horror. He is gonna live one more day, I think, but he has taken some significant damage. I think Wendy is okay to handle that guy on her own. So we have that bookcase there that seems to be some kind of secret entrance. And what else was, what else was in this room? We had a large scroll showing the solar system. So let's, let's search that as the first action for William. So the scroll is marked with the orbits of the eight planets. A straight line is drawn out across them. From the sun, marked with today's date and the words planetary alignment, gain a clue. Okay, so he has two clues and a cultist was defeated. So he should gain a clue token because it doesn't say when he defeats a monster. It says whenever a monster is defeated. For his second action, he is gonna check out that mysterious bookcase. Peering behind the bookshelf, the robed figure was moving. You see runic circles inscribed on the wall. You push aside the shelf to reveal the ritual circles the butler spoke of. You attempt to trace them as he told you. Tap to attempt the puzzle using lore, and he's not great on lore. So this is a chance to show you a puzzle, and this is one of the three kinds of puzzles. There is a sliding puzzle, which is what this is. There is a lock puzzle and a combination puzzle. And the combination puzzles are kind of like the game Mastermind, if you've ever played that, where there's uh, certain colors and you've got to try and guess the code. It will tell you how many are in the right position or how many are the right color or number. That's a fun one. Then the lock one is kind of a, it's a sliding puzzle where certain things are in the way and you need to slide a specific one into the right space. And this sliding puzzle is like those little toys you used to get where you have to slide the things and make the picture correct. So in a puzzle, we are testing the law skill. William has three law, so he is gonna to get to make three moves on this puzzle, which isn't gonna be very many. He can spend clue tokens, of which he has three, to be able to move more. So I think to get started, this seems like it should be here to me. So I'm gonna swap that one. There we go, that looks right, that matches up. And then this looks like a side, it looks like it would follow on this circle. This looks like the middle. So let's, let's swap this one. That's matching up there. Then, does this match up here? Does that, is that right? Yep, that seems to match. Oh, this one is right already as well. So it's just this. So I'm gonna need, I think two more swaps would do this. So to save waiting a whole nother turn, I think I'm gonna spend two clue tokens to be able to finish this. So I think if we did, if we did one, two, there we go. So we had to spend clue tokens to do it, but with one action, we completed the puzzle. Okay, so now you trace a continuous line through the winding markings as the butler instructed you. The runes illuminate with a strange green light and the wall panel pops open, revealing a secret door to a hidden study hidden behind the wall. Then gain a clue token and place a door token. So we get rid of the search. 
Let's place a door here where the bookcase once stood. And the secret panel in the wall slides open noiselessly and you peer into a hidden office. Place the study tile and a wall. So here is the study tile. Let's place that down there. We need to line up this door. And we need a wall to cut off this door here, apparently. Okay, what's going on in here? A bookshelf filled with frightening objects is mounted on the opposite wall. So we can search that frightening bookshelf. An oak desk sits on the other side of the room. Place a search token there. So one of them is gonna house that key, I assume. Move a space into the explored area. I think we'll do that. And I believe that is William's two actions. So we will move on to the mythos phase. The books seem to rustle slightly, but there is no breeze. This mythos event affects the investigator in the library with the lowest uh, observation. There is no one in the library, so no effect. That was lucky. The hunting horror moves three spaces towards the investigator within range with the most items. So that would be Wendy anyway, but the monster attacks her. The creature lashes out with two rope-like limbs, grabbing hold of your arms and possessions. Suffer two damage and agility negates. Well, that is good for Wendy because she is going to get to roll five dice. That is three successes. She is completely fine with that, I think. Yeah, two damage. She negates all of that. Each investigator must resolve a horror check, and that is just Wendy. She resolves a horror check against that hunting horror. The creature rattles deep in its throat, then begins to speak in clear, unambiguous words. The last words of its many victims, one after the other. Suffer three horror, Will negates. So she has four dice for Will. So she negates one. She doesn't have any clue tokens, so she's going to suffer two horror but she can suffer up to eight, so it's not too bad. So let's see here. Sudden shock, you fling up your hands to defend yourself, sending a few of your possessions flying. Uh, drop two random items, then flip this card face down. Oh dear. So I'll just shuffle up her items and drop some on the floor. So she has dropped her Holy Cross and her Elder Ward. So that's bad because a monster is attacking her. She would roll an extra dice. Have I missed that? Uh, and the thing that would let her roll more on those checks. But they are just dropped, so it means she's just going to have to waste a an action to pick those back up. Her second horror, minus shock, no additional effect to put the face down. So she now has four face down horror. And, well, it doesn't matter whether they're face up or face down. When she reaches eight horror, she will go insane, which isn't the end, but it's not great. So that is the end of the Mythos phase. And let's see, she still has a knife, so I think Wendy is going to attack that creature and try and get rid of it once and for all. So attack with a bladed weapon. You slash at the creature, but it bats the weapon out of your hand. The blade flips end over end through the air. She needs to make an agility check with two successes, but her agility is five, so that shouldn't be a problem if she's... Oh dear, she is not having a good day. So, uh, the bland lands next to you with a clatter. Drop your weapon. Oh no. So that was it for that attack. And she only needs to do two damage. I think she's going to try and attack unarmed. So you dodge behind the creature, hoping a strike from behind will prove more effective than a frontal attack. So another agility check, which should be good for her. And she has two successes there and a clue token. If you pass, your theory proves accurate and your strikes cause the creature to lurch and wheel around. The monster suffers damage equal to your test result plus one, which is enough to take out that hunting horror. So that is gone now. She doesn't get to do anything else, but at least that is taken out. And a monster was defeated. William gains another clue token. And speaking of William, he is in this room here. So I think that he will investigate where he is first. Should he? Because he could, he could use a move action to move here and then he could use his second movement to move back because you can interrupt the move action with other actions. So let's move him there and then he'll investigate this, this desk here. The oak desk has been kept in good condition. A number of papers and books are neatly stored on the desk's surface. On the desk, you find what looks like a personal planner. As you pick up the book, a brass key clatters from between the pages. You turn to the page it had been holding and find a note scrawled there. If the alignment truly weakens the veil, I believe that it's the only moment we have to break through. I will make the necessary preparations in the attic. Gain the brass key and incriminating evidence. So William has those now. 
You place the planner back onto the desk and search through the drawers. You find some things of use, but no additional evidence. Gain the bandages. So there are the bandages. An action to discard up to two face down damage, then discard the card. And continuing his move action from before, he will just move back to where he was. So that's the end of the investigator phase. Let's see what awaits us now. Wendy Adams absentmindedly touches her hand to the wall and is overcome with visions of betrayal and bloodshed during the construction of this accursed building. She suffers three horror and will plus one negates. Unfortunately, she doesn't have her extra will item, which would let her roll five, but she does get to roll four. So how much horror can she negate? None. Okay, she suffers three horror. This might not be good for Wendy, but has, she has got that that item so keep face up roll a fewer die when resolving a law test suffer one additional face down damage then flip this face down so she suffers a face down damage now as well and then the third horror suffer an additional face down horror then flip this face down oh no so now she has suffered eight horror and she is insane when a person goes insane you discard all of their face down horror, which is quite nice because most of hers was face down. And then grab a random insane card. And we need to make sure that it is from the right player count. So there we go. I found one that was one player. Spread the truth. No one believes you, but you have seen it. The truth is out there. You do not win the game as normal. Instead, you win only if the investigation is complete and you have two or more evidence unique items. Otherwise, you lose the game. So I assume that's her personally. So we could trade some of these. These two. This is unique evidence. And hopefully we can find another one. And we need to because we can't win without it. So that was some bad luck for Wendy there. Back to the investigator phase. I think Wendy, she is going to take a crack at this search token here. So let's see, a desk sits against the wall being used as an end table. It has several large drawers locked by a combination. So this is gonna be a puzzle most likely. You attempt to unlock the combination lock on the drawers, attempt using observation. She has four observation and she has the pocket watch, which lets her perform an additional step. So she's gonna to get to make five attempts here. So with this, there are there's a three digit combination and we need to guess which it is. So Let's let's just guess ones. Let's see how many ones are in this. No ones. Okay, let's... How many twos? There's one two, and it's in the right place, obviously, because they're all twos. So... So there's no threes in it. I know that because there's definitely a two in, and it's not in that position. So let's put the two there. So the two is in the right position now. So does that mean that it's five, two, five? Or is my guessing wrong? There we go. So she used five steps, that's what she had. Puzzle completed. Okay, what was in here? You figure out the combination and the drawers pop open with an audible click. Inside, you find a grotesque statuette of an octopoid dragon and something else that might be of use. Gain the medical textbook, the grotesque stone unique item and the clue. So I'll just grab those. So the grotesque stone is a unique piece of evidence, which is good for her ability there. And the medical textbook, you or another investigator within range may discard a face down damage. And she gets a clue as well. So she has another action. I think she's gonna pick up all of this stuff from the floor so she gets to roll all those dice, all those extra dice again. As for William, I think he will investigate the Search token where he is. The shelf is lined with curiosities from the mundane to the horrifying. As you scan over the various items, your eyes fall on an urn marked Lilith Vanderbilt, 1856 to 1925. You pick up the urn and find it filled with ashes. Oh dear, we can either leave it alone or we can smash it. Okay, we've gone this far. You smash the urn in a cloud of ash and broken porcelain. The room seems to chill as you find an object amidst the ashes. As you pick it up, you hear the sound of a woman weeping. Gain the sedatives common item, then discard this search token. Okay, so the sedatives, at the start of your turn, you may discard three damage and three horror if you do discard the card and end your turn. So you basically skip a turn to get rid of a lot of damage. And his second action, well, there's nothing else left to do here, so he might as well go out there. And I think that's both of their actions done. 
So the room gets very cold as the lights become blindingly bright. Your ears pop as every light in the room burns out. Place darkness in each space in hall corner two. Okay, let's grab some darkness. So hall corner two is where we are. And each investigator there suffers so two horror, will plus one negates. So Wendy is going to get to roll five to negate this two horror. And she negates it. And William rolls four. And he negates it also. But we are in darkness. And darkness means that you can't spend clue tokens to adjust your dice results or gain extra puzzle steps. So we want to get out of this darkness. A robed figure appears from a side door and begins searching around. Upon seeing signs of other people, the figure yells, there's someone here. And you hear someone shout, get rid of them. Again, okay, deja vu. So he is in the kitchen, and I don't think Eugene's going to like that. The robed figure sneaks into the dining room and comes face to face with Eugene. The butler yells in fright and flees into the entryway. Move Eugene as indicated. So the cultist moves two spaces towards the nearest investigator, then it attacks the investigator with the lowest agility. So it's going to move two spaces, basically, into the lobby. And there are no investigators there. And it doesn't do anything, so it's going to stand in there just uh, casually chatting with Eugene. Each investigator has to resolve a horror check. Well, we are nowhere near him, so no horror checks to be performed there. Let's end the mythos phase. Investigator phase. So, now, we need to find the attic. Should we hand over this incriminating evidence? Since, I'm not sure how it works in a solo game. In a two-player game, you would keep it secret what your insanity is. And no one else could know, and you'd just have to kind of perform it on your own. But in a one-player game, could I just give her this? Now we could trade some stuff between us. I think I am going to give Wendy the sedatives and the incriminating evidence. And then she is going to just give me back this Elder Ward. So balance it out a little bit there. Okay, so that was my first action. And then I think my second action as William here is going to be to move to this door. And then Wendy's actions, she is going to move here and she is going to explore this door. Okay, you suspect the unmarked door leads to a bedroom. Okay, so maybe that's not worth investigating. Since there is a time limit in this game, the ritual is being performed Whatever is going on with this planetary alignment, it's happening now, and we need to find it. So I don't think I want to spend an action, although nothing's going to happen this turn, I think. So she moves there, she could investigate this, or she could investigate this, but we won't have chance to do anything once we open that door. Let's open it. Let's find out. Okay, she's going to explore. Where's that? A weathered door stands at the end of the hall. You hear bizarre noises from the other side. When you try the handle, you find the door is locked. A keyhole sits beneath the brass door handle. You can explore only if you have the brass key unique item. And she doesn't. So when we did that trade, we'll, we'll say that I gave Wendy that. Because it would be silly not to give it to her. So let's explore. And here we go. That's look, that looks like an attic to me. And we place it like so. As you open the door to the unfinished attic, the stairs and walls creak as if exhaling a breath of dusty air. Everything in the room has been pushed to the sides and a massive circle of runes has been carved into the floor. Discard this explore token and place the attic. So we need a wall also. Because we are not getting into the kitchen from the attic. And on the far side of the attic, furniture and other random items have been pushed up against the wall. Among the items you spot something useful, place the sledgehammer. And that seems like a very nice heavy weapon there. Two robed figures stand across from each other over the ritual circle, chanting. The one nearest to you seems to be in some kind of a trance and hardly acknowledges your approach. Scorn, spawn a cultist. So the cultist stands over the sledgehammer there. And we have these nice little tokens here to indicate who is who, because so, there's two cultists on the board now. It's going to tell us which one the app's referring to. The other figure lowers the hood of his robe and points at you with an ornate dagger. What are you doing on my property? You are meddling in things you do not understand, and you will die for it. 
spawn a Priest of Dagon as indicated. This is William Vanderbilt. So here is the Priest of Dagon. And dedicated to a monstrous divinity, the Priest of Dagon celebrates the union of man and undersea monster. Oh dear. So he's up there at the top of the attic, running the show. William Vanderbilt begins chanting a heinous incantation that causes reality to warp and shift. A terrible fish-like creature slips through the fabric of reality and into our world. Spawn a deep one as indicated. So over there, a deep one stirs. And it is aquatic. It can move through impassable borders representing water. It is some terrible and powerful fusion of fish and human being, croaking, hopping with deadly teeth and claws. So that's going to be coming for us in the coming rounds. Elsewhere in the mansion, a second horrifying fish thing breaches the barrier between worlds. Spawn a deep one as indicated. And that gets a green token there. And Eugene. Oh no, what's this? The pungent scent of rotting fish precedes the third amphibious monstrosity that slips into our world with a splash of salt water. Spawn a deep one as indicated. Wow. There is a lot of monster action going on right now. There is a lot in that mansion to be scared of. The ritual circle on the ground is scattered with candles, skulls and other trinkets. If you could get these ritual components you could stop the cult's vile magics and have enough proof to condemn the Vanderbilt family. Place an interact token as indicated. So we can interact over here and try and stop the ritual. You may move a space into the explored area and that was Wendy wasn't it? So she is going to go into there and hopefully we can cause some chaos. You must interrupt the ritual taking place before it is complete. And that was the end of our actions though. Oh no, that was a terrible thing to do just before our turn ends. Okay, let's have a very terrible mythos phase. Unbidden, the terrible things you have seen rise up from your memory where they were safely locked away. Each investigator flips two horror face up. No one has any face down horror actually. The only person with horror is Wendy and it's face up. The cultist moves two spaces. It's this cultist down here. He moves two spaces. Okay, he is going to get to me. The monster attacks. The cultist disappears into the shadows. There is little time to react as you are ambushed. Agility check. One success. He gets a success. If you pass, the cultist reappears just behind you, but you manage to scramble away. Uh, the red cultist moves two spaces towards the nearest investigator. And it's going to attack Wendy. The cultist wraps grimy hands around your neck, squeezing tight. Three dice, and we need two successes. And she's going to turn that into a success, so she passes with a clue token, her only clue token. Uh, pry the fingers from your neck, and the cultist finally relents when you hear them snap. Oh dear. So that's okay. Vanderbilt moves two spaces, so he is going to start attacking Wendy as well. The monster attacks. Okay. Vanderbilt hooks one arm around you, then pounds with a fist and knee over and over. Suffer three damage. Strength negates. And she negates two of that damage. So what is the damage she takes? Uh, minor injury. Only a flesh wound. No additional effect. Flip it face down. So she has two face down damage. The deep one. So the one without a token moves two spaces towards the nearest investigator. He is just going to go through the library here. There's no investigators there, so he doesn't do anything. The green deep one moves two spaces, and he is going to land on William there. He's going to attack. The deep one's gills flare at the scent of blood. As it charges, its horrible mouth distends to reveal row upon row of shark-like teeth. Agility check, and we need two successes here, with only three dice for William. And he has two successes! He has been amazing with dice rolls, and he has a re-roll as well that I don't think I've ever used. Yeah, where's that? There we go, the lucky rabbit's foot. We need to keep an eye on that. He also rolls additional dice when monsters are attacking him. So if we'd failed that, I would go again. The deep one moves two spaces towards the nearest investigator. That's the purple one, so there is a party going on on this space here with William. The monster attacks. The creature circles you, gargling a sinister... Until you flinch. Then it lashes out with its claws. Suffer damage and horror and will negate. So he gets to roll five dice because he rolls an additional one while a monster is attacking him. And he negates four damage. He doesn't quite need that, but he has negated it. Each investigator has to resolve a horror check. So 
I'm just going to get up here, and Wendy is going to have to roll against Vanderbilt. He has a four horror rating to... He has a three to the cultist one. So Vanderbilt whispers a message that only you can hear. Your friends seek to slay you. Will check. Two successes. She rolls four dice there. And she needs two successes. So she gets one success. She doesn't have a clue token. If you fail, you turn against your nearby investigators. Suffer one horror, then each other investigator in your space suffers a face down damage. So let's see what horror she suffers. Keep face up, roll a fewer die when resolving an observation test. Oh dear, these are stacking up on her now. So it's lore and observation. And the highest in this space is one of the deep ones. A thick, fishy aroma fills the air as the Deep One exhales hideous fumes. We need a will check with two successes. If you pass, the stench is horrid, but you keep your... I don't, why am I reading that? Let's do the check. Four dice, two successes. He has one success, and he will flip that for another success, spending one of his clues. So, the stench is horrid, but you keep your calm. And that is the end of horror checks.